legends. So here is part two of this epic F350 build with our first ever liftoff canopy. Now, if you haven't seen part one, click up here and go back and watch the first episode to this build. Now, let's get into it. Alright guys, so the liftoff side of things with this canopy. Now, a little bit of a precursor with the liftoff side of things in Core Off-Road. I wouldn't sign off on a liftoff system based on a few different parameters. The safety side of things was the first one. Yeah, and usability when it's actually off the car, on the legs yeah. that it comes off on. Yeah. Things like that. Like I had some issues, I got two young kids, right? and. If I had a canopy sitting in my garage, I know what my kids would be doing. They'd be building a cubby under there and a fort and probably swinging off the legs and all sorts of things. My main concern was how do we limit or try and engineer a system that the customer can't overload it? That was my biggest concern. And some of the other liftoff systems that are out there in the market you know, where they tell you you've got to take everything out, you can't sleep in it, you can't do this, you can't do, you got to strap the legs, you've got to do this. It is a, a mission. Yeah, and we've seen it ourselves where other canopies on lift off legs have been ratchet strapped together to yeah. stop them wobbling and moving around so much when they are off the car. Yeah, look, and it's the type of thing, I, I personally, I'm not the type of person that would take a canopy off. I've had a canopy on my vehicle since 2014, 2013, and never once have I thought, oh, I wish I could take this thing off. Yeah. That's also, there is some downsides, and look, we may do another video on the liftoff side of things because this vehicle is a prime example, right? We've got a leaf sprung rear end on a vehicle that needs a suspension spec to carry the constant load of the canopy. Now, when we take that canopy off, it's going to be Oh. Rock solid to ride in. Yeah, look, it is. It's going to be stiff in the rear end. You're, in all honesty, you're going to probably need a mouth guard and a kidney belt. That's all because with that suspension, look, we might do another video at the moment. We've got a BT50 here that's just got a standard tub on it and it's had a GVM upgrade. I drove it home the other day and in all honesty, it's an absolute pig of a thing to drive. So that's the, the downside. I know this customer has a plan. Um, with what he's doing to try and keep some weight in it if he doesn't have the canopy. Yeah. And this customer in particular is towing a, a big boat with him that he's going to be touring around with. So for that side of things, it's a bit of a different story. But the amount of customers that come in to us, even in the boys in sales, and say, I want a lift off canopy that I can just put on on the weekends and then I can drive my car around on a daily basis to and from work, go and do the groceries, all that kind of stuff. I guarantee your eyeballs will shake in your head <laughs> um, because having that side, there is a couple of exceptions, hmm. maybe 200 series with coil rear end. Yeah. You know, a Ram 2500. Yeah, with coil with rear end. Coil rear end is a, a bit different, but even still, them vehicles, you're still gonna have to upgrade the, the rear still coil. Still gonna have to have a big rear coil. Yeah, big rear coil to carry that constant load, but the one variable you have with a coil rear end is that you can let that airbag down. Correct. To try and make it a little bit nicer to ride, but even still, a, you know, a Ram 2500 or a 200 series with a 500 kilo constant load coil in the back, gonna be stiff. It's gonna be stiff, you can't, yeah. you cannot deny that. So, a few of the other things that we looked at was the loading or the engineering side of things. Now, we've got some photos. <laughs> and some video. And some video. <laughs> so, this thing's been engineered with a safe workload of 1,500 kilos. Now, we took it to 2.2 ton on our load tests and Drew and the engineers They've done the FEA testing on the subframe to find out if there's any hot spots or anything like that. It was 2.2 tonne plus probably an old Jimmy, so <laughs> up on top of it, so well over two tonne. And yeah, we put two tonne, so we put water, mm -hmm. so two one tonne. Yep, ICBs. Yep, yep, of water. And then like I said you got on top of it yep. and swayed around to try and get that water moving to see how much movement. Yep we got out of the legs and how much did it move and yep. so the worst water, case scenario. Yeah, worst case scenario, that water in the, in the ICBs, 
creates that inertia as the water keeps moving around and that's what yeah. we wanted it was probably the the easiest worst case scenario that's yeah, all to create yeah, yeah to create now this system unlike a lot of others you can actually live in while it's off the car that's all and we'll run through what our leg system and how the leg system works to try and create that stability yeah. that's as all as far as i'm aware correct me if i'm wrong mm -hmm. it's the only one on the market in australia that you can live in or sleep in, yeah. get in and use yep. while it's off the car. There is a couple of exceptions, maybe, you know, a couple of slide on camper yep. models, you know, but I know even some of them slide on campers, you've still got to strap the legs. You've still got to put the braces in to try and create that strength. And that's our leg system counteracts that. Um, the leg system is heavy duty. Don't get me wrong. And we'll go through that. <laughs> we'll go through that leg system very soon. The other thing that I wanted was it needed to be easy for the customer. So unlike some of the other ones on the market where you've got to get a bolt through and then you've got to be a contortionist to get your hand into the space underneath the vehicle. Let's put the nut on. To put the nut on and you've got to tape the nut to a spanner and glue the washer to the nut and all that. We didn't want that, all right? So underneath the subframe for the tray, there is actually a 16 mil steel plate that's bolted in. So there's an aluminium comp plate welded in, the steel plate bolts into that, so that that bolt has 16 mil of engagement through that steel plate, through the canopy, which has got crush tubes welded into it so that it's quick and easy. So the only thing that isn't on here as this video is getting filmed today is the indicators or the bolt indicators. So these are gonna have a little wheel nut indicator on them so that the customer has a visual guide to know if them bolts on the canopy are starting to come undone, that's or all. Moving or whatever. Yeah, yeah. moving, that's all. Um, so that process of making it easy, the other thing that we'll run through as we start to lift this canopy off is it actually has a guide system. Yeah, it's got some machine nylon cones yep. which go into a hole in the tray. Yep. So as you're lowering it down, it will self-center. Yep. So to line up with those bolt holes. So you're not trying to move it around, yep. get the bolt to get started. Yep. Once it's on, the bolts go straight in yep. and you're good to go. And it makes that fitting side of things nice and easy. I know the, the first time we remember we were testing it, you know, if you're slightly out, trying to line up a vehicle with a canopy, with a canopy when you're trying to reverse it in and get that on point so that a bolt can drop straight into the hole, it's, it's difficult, I, honestly. That, that's the one thing that would steer me away that if I was out there with the missus and kids, do you know what I mean? And poor old Jodes is trying to guide me in and guide the vehicle and get it under it. Like, honestly, that's, that's our recipe for disaster. Yeah, recipe for disaster, that's all. So, <laughs> um, and the missus is saying going left and you're meant to be going right. And look, it, so that guide system is gonna make it easier. And if it is slightly out, as the canopy starts to come down, the canopy will actually correct itself and drop down and with sweet. One, one to 1 1.5 mil tolerance, so you can drop the bolt straight into the hole. That's all. Should we get into it? Yep, let's show them. So one of the first parts we've just, I got a ratchet here. The main bolts into the tray, 21 mil um, head on them. They're going straight down, as I said, into the subframe, into that steel plate. So we'll go through, crack these off. Too quick for you, Cole. So that's the two bolts on the driver's side out. We'll replicate the same on the other side. Now, the leg system. <laughs> One of the other downsides to a lift off canopy, it, where do you put all the legs? Where do you put all the parts that actually take, are required, I guess, to lift that canopy off? So that's probably another thing that isn't widely covered in this whole lift off thing. Now, I watch heaps of videos of other companies going through and doing, you know, demos of their lift off canopy. Not once do they show you where the legs go. 
Mm. They take up a heap of your storage mm. capacity. And that's one thing that we, well, it took us a long time yeah. to come up with something. Yeah. Where are we going to put all this stuff that's not going to take up all the space in the world? If we left the legs all together, yeah. it'd take up all the space yeah. that you've got in your canopy. And even with the legs, you know, having, having a part with the leg that's engineered and certified, you know, and I know that you know, the legs that we looked at at the start, you know, it says the legs rated to 400 kilos and all that kind of stuff. You got four of them, that's 1600 kilos, that should be heaps. How you get a little 40 mil socket that slides in to be rated at that and still be stable, I, I do not know. So what we've used with the leg system is we spoke to the team at Boss 370. So we're using the Boss 63 mil legs so it's actually a jockey wheel. Correct. Essentially, that's a geared drive. Then we've designed and engineered their own system that slides into the canopy. So if we go through, pop these two caps out. On the inside, the leg system, which is all made out of six mil alley, right? basically slides in. So on this one, we've got passenger front. So on this one, stamped. So I've got driver's front. So driver's rear. Now, before we put this one in, we'll quickly touch on the actual mechanism that holds the leg in. So. It's basically a stepped cone system with a thrust bearing or a thrust washer at the front side. So when you go through and the actual legs installed into the canopy, you tighten this up to six Newton meters, I think, isn't it, Brent? I think it was six, six, six or, or nine, seven one of the meters. We've got a special little tool that actually does the, the correct pressure. When you do that up, this machine cone slides into the end of the leg and flares the leg out. So that'll provide the stability along with keeping that leg in there. So with anything that you're manufacturing, you need to have tolerances. Yep. It would be perfect if that leg was one tenth of a millimeter, right? But you need to have some tolerance for manufacturing and everything like that. Otherwise, it's too much of a pain to try and get in for the customer. Now, one thing that you'll start to notice with the lift-off system is that the legs aren't straight, right? Now, what our design was to try and create that stability on the canopy when it's not on the vehicle was to have the legs at five and a half degrees or six degrees out, along with five and a half, six degrees on that Y-axis as well, pushing out. So that as the canopy or as these legs are loaded, all of the force is pushing in. Correct as opposed to just being vertical. Now, if you have something that's 1500 mil long, for example, and you have one mil of play at the top of that leg is gonna equal 15 mil at the bottom. Rule of thumb. Give or right? take. Give or take. If, that's you're, the, if you're a mathematician, I'm not an engineer, yeah, right? So, that, that, yeah. That's us adding things yeah, up. Yeah, so that's right. once again, we could be wrong, but yeah. it's pretty close. <laughs> so you imagine if you, know, you had two or three mil, of play at the top over a meter, it's gonna be a hell of a lot. So, and that's one thing that you need to have some sort of tolerance mm. there to make it easy to slide in. So with the legs being angled out. It stops that. It stops that. And it's gonna basically force all of them legs inward to try and create more sta stability. Legs, what have we got there? All right. So like we said before, in the trundle drawer, we've got the boss legs. So what are these rated to again, Jimmy? Uh, they're, they're rated to, I think at closed height, 1600 kilos each. Each. Yep. So that gives you the safety that if someone does put a canopy mm -hmm. on unlevel ground, Yep. And it's loaded more one side than the other yep. or something like that. Mm -hmm. We're still well covered. Yep, definitely. The big thing we wanted to try and reduce was try and reduce, have a system that has next to no slop in it. So if we've got a couple of mil here, then we've got a couple of mil at that end. 
and a couple of mil, that that's what the main issue was. That and we wanted to try and make it nice and easy for the customer. The Boss Legs was something that was certified and they had all their own engineering and everything for it, that's all. So while Jimmy's doing this, we'll just touch on with these clamps, they do come with a T-handle style clamp just to make things quicker and easier. We change them out to a bolt so they can just use a cordless and do them straight up. Nice, quick, easy. So with the Boss 370 leg system, what it allows us to do is it allows us to have adjustment to suit different vehicle platforms. That's also, we can adjust the height of the leg to the top of the arm so that it clears the actual door of the canopy. But it also allows us to have additional extensions on the leg system. So for this particular vehicle, we've got the two 120 extensions, which they're quick and easy. Drop the pin in. Plus they've got the foot as well, which allows us a certain degree of range on uneven ground and the gearbox system. So the big thing with our two-part leg system is it allows it to be easily stored. Now, if this was one unit, it would be an absolute nightmare to try and store all of these legs. Yep. Try and store all of these legs as one complete unit. So with the two separate parts, it allows us easier storage. And if the customer ever has an issue with one of the boss 370 legs, which I'm sure that they won't. It's just the standard off the shelf part, that's all, that integrates back into our system. Same thing. So now we're set up, we'll go through, do a quick little cut. We'll go to the other side, set the other side of the canopy up and we'll then start to lift it all off. Let's get to it. All right, so while Jimmy's doing these legs, we'll just go through with you, in all honesty, no fast forwarding, nothing like that, how long this will actually take to get the canopy off. And truly, it's probably gonna take anywhere from 20 to 30 minutes to set the legs up by the time you get them out, put them together, and lift the canopy off. That's all honesty. No fast forwarding. Can't tell you it's gonna take 10 minutes. It's not. We, we have tried to make it as fast as we can by doing away with the T-bar handles like we spoke about. You can see Jimmy doing now. Everything is designed to do with a cordless. We say do it with a cordless, not an impact, like a rattle gun or whatever. Use a cordless on the drill setting and you should be sweet. All right, so before we lift this canopy off for you, we do have to disconnect central locking and power to the canopy. So I've got two andos in here, 150 and one 120 there just to disconnect and then we're good to go. So with the central locking system, there is two systems on this vehicle. So there's an internal central locking system, right? That has its own key fob. Now, if you've got the canopy off the car, that separate key fob will actually activate the central locking in the canopy. If the canopy's on the car and the central locking Anderson plug is connected on the tray, you hit the button on the car and it'll lock the car and the canopy. So two individual systems. Yeah, so yeah. that way if you're going away for yeah. the day, looking around or whatever, and you're gonna leave your canopy at yep. camp, you can lock it, central locking, done dusted. Yep, don't look like a jail warden walking around with a big swagger keys hanging off your hip. That's all, it's all still centrally locked, whether it's on or off the car. Pretty cool little system, actually. It's not bad. Yeah. So you'll see on our leg system that the legs are angled out, along with being 
forward and rear of the canopy as well. So what that's gonna do is that's gonna push that force back into the frame of the canopy and provide us with the stability that we need. So you can live in this thing, that's all. Um, sleep in the tent, all that kind of jazz. All right, so we've lifted it up now. It's time to get the vehicle out now. In all honesty, having two people to do this, one spotting and the other one driving, just to make sure, that's all. All right, Brent. So now we can go through, bring the canopy down to a usable height. Do the fronts first, or yep. back. Probably the back's higher, isn't it? Yep. So, as you can see, we've now lowered it down. It's off the vehicle, and it's now down to a suitable height. The legs are still rock solid and the canopy itself is still rock solid. That's all, and that was our main concern, was that you didn't have to worry about ratchet straps and braces from this leg to that leg and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, having the legs solid, and like Jimmy said, usable height, you can see the height of the car, where it was, it will take an inch or two yep. to where it is now, and it's the usable height. Yeah, it's perfect. That's now all. Now it's just under your head for the door. Yep. Perfect height for all your drawers. It's spot on. Nice and easy to access, that's all. Even things, you can still see we're obviously still juiced up because the lithium system in the canopy. We've still got the Nomad ladder, which is gonna make it easier for customers to access. Keeps it nice and low to the ground. Even as we're sitting now, if we were to drop the entire way down to the pins, on the legs, which is the lowest it could possibly go, your ladder's still not gonna hit the ground. That's all. So, it's one of them things, if a customer did drop it all the yeah. way down, you know that there's still no dramas, you're still gonna be able to open up the ladder. Access wise, we'll now go through, lift the tent up, and go through and climb up, but like even standing on that ladder, there's bugger all movement in that canopy. That's all. So we might go through, Brent, yep. we'll undo the latches, Shut this down so you can see. All the latches off. We're good. We're good to go. So once again, the bundle top electric tent, super easy. Push of a button on the other side where Jimmy is. And straight up. Honestly, cannot speak highly enough of these bundle top rooftop tents. They, I love it. Everybody gets sick of me talking about them because the ease of setting up that quickly and having that 540 watt solar system on the top, it really is difficult to go past. This is the King model. That's also at 1650 wide or 1640 wide overall. 2.1 meters long. It's got a 100 mil mattress inside it. It's got lights inside, fans inside. Being able to set up camp or set up your rooftop tent that quick and having the Nomad ladder to make it nice and easy to climb up, get into your rooftop tent, surely is an awesome bloody option, that's all. Little things, I know even with mine, when you're climbing into your tent, that's all. I use me spare tire. What's that, a, what's that smell like? Yeah. <laughs> it's only early, mate. They're not that bad. Um, nice and easy. Sit your boots up on top of the spare tyre. You're good to get into your tent. And just while Jimmy's up there, we'll just go again. That's me giving this thing a pretty good shake. Yeah. Strong winds, all that sort of stuff. You guys up there. Yeah. Oh, 
any other curricular activities you get up to up there, <laughs> you're going to be safe, it's going to be stable. Yeah. Even on the legs Ben might be able to show you, we did incorporate tie down points. It was one thing that we thought that, you know, this system is designed to go to the, the outback. Yep. You know what I mean? Through the Kimberleys, all that kind of stuff. If you did have a cyclone coming through or strong winds, there is actually... So there's a hole in the leg there. You can actually pin these down if you need to. Yeah. So we just wanted some provision that, you know, if you were stuck up north and a cyclone was coming through, you could ratchet strap the actual legs down, whether you smash pins in or star pickets or what have you. Chain it to pin something. Into the ground, chain it to something. Look, it was a simple thing. A couple of holes to be put in the design just yeah. to give the customer that option if ever they needed it. Under normal operation, climbing in, getting in out of the tent, you don't need to strap anything down. That's all. It's not going anywhere. No, nah, not at all. So nice and solid system. And with our Nomad ladder, makes it nice and easy to get in and out of your tent. So that's pretty much it. We'll run through the guide system yep. underneath. So we can go through and show you actually how this will come back on and how it will align itself or center itself on the tray as it's going through. But pretty much, apart from putting my boots back on, that, that's our new lift-off system. <laughs> our new lift-off system will go through. It might be a little quick fast forward to show you getting it back on the car, but in all honesty, I'd be banking off that 20 minutes, 25 minutes for one person in reality to actually get it off of the vehicle, that's all. And I don't, I've never used another lift-off canopy yeah. before, but I would say you're probably on par with most other systems Yeah. in that's that lift-off canopy yeah. range. That's like, without doing a fast forward. Yeah. You know what I mean? I'm making a look, it's being honest with you guys, that's, you know, something that you need to factor in. And I don't, you know, honestly, I don't think because it is liveaboard, if you're driving on a trip and you've got four or five nights to get there, well, you're never going to take it off. No, you're it's just going to yeah, use it on thing. the car. Yep. And one good thing with our canopies, and especially our GTU model, even if it is on the car and you can't be bothered to take it off, well, it's still only going to take you five or ten minutes to pack the entire canopy up, including your tent, your awning, everything. So it's still quick to pack up camp. So if you couldn't be bothered to take it off, at least then you can still quickly pack up, drive your car, put your boat in the water, do whatever you want to want, or whatever you've got to do, and go from there, that's all. But if you're parking up somewhere for a month, definitely would be cool. Take it off. Take it off, put the boat in and out of the water, yeah. come into town. And you don't have all that one thing with a lift-off canopy, and like I said, if you are pulling up somewhere for a couple of weeks or something, having that off the car and being able to run around, do what you want to do, if you want to do some more serious fall driving yep. or search some tracks that you don't want that extra weight on the car, yep. it will help you out. Yeah, definitely. So definitely a cool little system. I hope we didn't miss anything for you anyway. Uh, we'll run through the last bit and then we'll come and say goodbye. So underneath here is our guide system so that when the canopy's coming down and onto the tray, if something is slightly misaligned, this guide system over here, so it's basically a CNC machined um, HDPE cone. So as the tray starts to come up, if it's slightly misaligned to one side, it'll actually push the canopy over so that when you go to drop that mounting bolt through and into the tray, it is perfectly aligned. So that's going to make it a bit easier for the customer to try and line everything up, especially when you're by yourself, you're trying to reverse the vehicle underneath the canopy. If you aren't 100% on the money with getting it in, this is going to be able to help you. And then back up on the tray, uh, Brent will show you the other section where these conical cones will actually go into the tray section. All right, guys. So like Jimmy said, up on top of the tray here, we've got your bolt hole through the tray and you've got that hole for the conical cone to slide into. So you get your check plate on top. Underneath that, you've got your six mil alley and then your steel plate under there as well, which runs all the way through for the bolt hole and that guide. So that'll just slide straight in and align you up with the bolt hole next to it. While we're up on top of the tray, when he doesn't have his canopy on, we've put little tie down points in there that fold down to clear when the canopy is on there. He's got spots to put sides on the tray later for his hinges and things like that. Also up the front, up top here, we've got steady work lights. So if he's out, just using his tray, needs a bit of light, hook his boat up or whatever it happens to be, he's covered. 
All right, legends, we're gonna go through now, lift her back up and get her back onto the vehicle. A visionary knows no limit. Do it big so your name be remembered. Play your cards like the hand of a winner. Eat your breakfast but make room for dinner. Got a hunger for success and my dreams get bigger. You wanna dream big, you better dream large. Blocking lands on the boulevard. Calling shots, but you're in charge. You wanna dream big, you better dream large. You wanna live life like a renegade. Come to the top for your piece of fate. Alright legends, so that is our new liftoff system. I hope that you enjoyed the video. Bit of a tag team between me and BA just to try and cover all the content. There's a lot in this thing, yeah. so it's a longer video than normal. Yeah. So hopefully we didn't lose you halfway through. Um, but look, if you've got any questions, smash out a comment. Uh, send us a comment about Starlink system if you've used them before. Yep. Um, if you're uh, looking for any more information about our GTU videos, there's build videos up here and there's also more cooking segments down there. And legends, thanks for tuning in anyway. Remember, the adventure begins where the bitumen ends. Cheers.